All right, welcome everybody to Zenfolio Live. I am Robert with Zenfolio Customer Support, and I just want to say thank you for joining us on today's live Q and A. Um, if this is your first time joining us, if you're watching us on YouTube, just say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. We're glad that you guys are here, and I look forward to answering your questions about your account and giving you guys a hand helping you out with your Zenfolio account. If you're watching us on Facebook, um, thanks for watching us on Facebook. Leave us a comment, like the video, uh, share it, and invite your friends. Anyway, so um, now that we've got all the uh, housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the upcoming trade show, WPPI. So we are going to be at WPPI, and those dates are February 7th through the 9th. We're going to be in booth number 1143. And uh, so make sure you come by and say hi to us. That's uh, WPPI there in Las Vegas, booth number 1143. Uh, that'll be February 7th through the 9th. So we'd love for you guys to come hang out, say hi to us, uh, and meet, meet you guys. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, jump into some questions here. So if you guys are on YouTube and you've got questions, you know what to do. Just throw them out in the chat. If you're watching us on Facebook and you guys have got questions on Facebook, just leave a comment on the video, and um, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Hey, jo I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Jorgen from Denmark, thanks for joining us. Awesome to have you here on the, the live Q&A. Um, Glad you're watching, and if you got any questions, feel free just to throw them out in that chat, and we will answer them as best we can. All right, um, so now we've talked about the trade show. Let's uh, go ahead and get into some email questions. And guys, if you've got email questions, um, you just need to shoot them to www.zenfolio.com forward slash contact, and then on the subject line, just put YouTube live question, and we will answer your questions that you send to that uh, next week on YouTube live. All right. Um, so the first question I've got here is, how do I create packages, and can I also add digital products to them? So with Zenfolio, we've got a built-in package feature, and it's right up here up top. If you go to Selling right here, and you can actually click on Packages down in the bottom left. So let me get myself out of the way here. All right, so we're going to go down to Packages right here. And this is where you're going to create packages. Now, yes, you absolutely, you can add digital products to your packages. But the one thing that you're going to need to keep in mind is that um, you need to have those digital uh, products created first before you can add them to the package. If you're not familiar with creating digital products, there's a great tutorial on YouTube. Uh, if, I, if I could get Cheryl to toss that in the chat, there's a great video tutorial on creating digital products on our YouTube channel. Um, so basically what you'll need to do is make sure that you've got those digital products created first, and then you're just gonna go to packages here, add a new package, and then give this package a name. Uh, depending on what the package is for, obviously you're gonna name it for different things. I'm just gonna name this one uh, demo package. Demo package one. And then here now you've got to make a choice. You can choose it for this to be one photo for all packages, which means it's a single image package. Or you can do one photo for each product in this package, which means it's a multi image package. Now, on that note, if you're using the new shopping experience and you're selling a lot of packages, currently multi image packages are not going to show up on the little quick uh, quick shop sidebar. Now, I, I'm glad to let you know, though, that that is something that we are correcting. I don't I don't have the exact timeline when, of when that's going to be corrected, but that is something that's going to be fixed. And uh, before long, you'll be able to show multi image packages on the uh, quick shop sidebar. So for now, let's just go ahead and create a one photo for all products in here package. And then let's say we just want to do something really simple like a print and a single download. So what I'm going to do is click on add products right here. And then first I'm going to choose a print. So uh, when you click on add products anywhere, if you look up in the top right corner and you see this show all vendors, that means that you're looking at products from all of our integrated vendors. Now to make this a little easier, what I like to do is narrow it down. So I know I want to offer a print from Impix. I'm just going to click on show vendors and then choose MPix from the vendor list. That way 
no matter what product I choose now, that print is going to be coming from Impix. So I'm going to click on prints right here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to choose a print at random. I'm just going to choose a 4x6 and add selected product. Now here's another thing that's really important when you're creating packages. Color correction settings. So if your package, if you, you need to go ahead and set up color correction settings here. If you choose to allow your clients to set up color correction through your price list, um, then you can pick whichever one of these you want. But normally I would recommend when you're creating a price list and also when you're creating a package to either choose to have color correction automatically apply or have it choose to do not enhance. The important thing is, is that everything that goes into that price list and your packages all have the same settings because products that have color correction applied ship separate from products that do not have color correction applied and if your clients make an order that has both then they are going to get hit with a double shipping fee because it ships separately so for this i'm just going to go ahead and apply color correction and so now we've got this here if i wanted to add a couple more prints here i could what i want to do is um you can do like this right here and then um, that's going to up the quantity of the print. Now with this package too, you could also add some framing and mounting. So if you wanted to set up a, uh, you wanted to set up like a specific frame, specific mounting option, you can do that here in the package. So let's just say we know that for uh, this four by six, maybe we want to just add some single weight backboard to it. So we can definitely do that right here and apply that. Now let's go ahead and add a digital product here. So what we're going to do is go back to add products. And then we're going to click up here and choose the studio name. And this is where you're going to be able to get those digital products. So right there is single image download. I'm going to click add selected. And so now we've created a package that has a four by six print. Well, actually it has three four by six prints in it. They all have single weight backboard and then also is that digital download. So like the most important thing here again is what I say is make sure that you choose the correct color uh, correction settings right here. So that's going to help you uh, avoid some headache later on down the road. Okay, so now we've got this package pretty much created. What we wanna do is we want to establish its selling price right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the selling price, which is right here, that's 777. That's the base lab price and all that stuff. I'm just gonna do $10 right here and hit next. Actually, let's go right here and do the selling price right here as well. $10 here, hit next, and that's gonna save that package. Uh, you can put the package in a category. You can also give it a description if you want, so you can type out what's in it and all that kind of information and then go down to the bottom and hit next. That's gonna save your package. And then you just need to go to a price list and add it to the price list. So I'm going selling price list right here. And then click on the price list that you wanna use and just go and add that package to the price list. So you're gonna go add products up at the top left right here. And then if you don't see the package right away because you're like on all vendors or you see packages up here, you can do that. I like to just go right here, choose a studio name, click packages, and then we need to find that uh, demo package right here. Demo package one right there. And now that's been added to that price list and all I have to do is save it. All right, so I hope that helps with uh, your question about how do I create packages and how do I um, add digital products to them and things like that. Packages are definitely a really cool feature. Um, it's something you should definitely be taking advantage of if you're not taking advantage of it yet. All right, so let's see what's going on with the next question here. How can I be more engaging with the people who visit my website? In my galleries so um if you want to be more engaging with people who are visiting your website visiting your galleries maybe you're a wedding photographer maybe you're in a sports and event photographer um, and you're putting galleries up there and you've got lots of people visiting and visiting them not just a single specific client there's something that you can set up called visitor sign-in and I know we talk about this a lot uh, on the on the uh, live stream. It's a really cool feature because it's going to help you build your email 
email list, which I'm going to show you some other things you can do with your email list later on. But um, after you have that visitor sign-in set up, what you can do is you can set up a thing called triggered emails. And that's going to automatically engage your your uh, gallery's visitors um, by whenever they do visitor sign-in. That's going to set off a series of triggered emails if you set them up. Now, I do want to say that none of that stuff can ever really replace good old-fashioned personal interaction. So, you know, if you can get personal with your clients or the people that are visiting your galleries, you know, handshakes, meet them somewhere, talk to them, things like that. Uh, emails are never, ever going to replace that. But automating the process and making some nice personalized emails will definitely help. So let's start with visitor sign in and turning that on and uh, showing you how that works. So what we're going to do first is switch over to browser only. And then what I'm going to do is go down here to photos. And then we're going to turn on that visitor sign in. So we're just going to pick a gallery here. Uh, let's go to let's go to this client's gallery group right here. And then I'm just going to click on this Smith gallery right here. And then we are going to go over here under toolbox, scroll down and find where it says visitor sign in. So this is where you're going to turn visitor sign in on. We're going to click on visitor sign in right here. And as you can see, it already says it's displayed. That means that it's turned on for that gallery. Now, uh, what you want to do is come down here, make sure these options are checked. There is an option here, this first option here that says send email message with sign in information. You know, if you're not expecting to get a lot of people going to that gallery, maybe just a few here and there, I would probably definitely leave this on. It's kind of nice to get that notification to let you know that people have visited the gallery. Um, now, if this is like a wedding gallery or maybe a high school sporting event gallery where there's going to be tons of people just going through that gallery, I would probably uncheck this option because I don't want 300 emails coming to me saying, hey, this person signed into this gallery. Hey, this person signed into that gallery. So I would personally probably turn that off. I get enough emails as it is, and that's probably just going to get on my nerves. Now, the option you do want to make sure that's checked is this automatically update my contact list. And what this is going to do is when somebody goes through the visitor sign in process, they're going to give you their name and their email address, and it's going to take that and add that to your contacts list. So we're going to go right here. And you can just have page heading. This is the information that your clients see. And then the sign in fields are right here. You can have the name be required, the email address be required, uh, phone number, and that's on you. I would probably would not give my phone number out if somebody asked for it uh, on their photography website. Uh, next, we're just going to click save. And then let me just show you what this is going to look like. So, what I'm going to do is on the Smith Gallery right here. I'm going to go right here to sharing and client access, copy this link right here. And then what I'm going to do is since I am signed into a uh, incognito window, I'm going to open up a new window really quick. So file new window. And then I'm just going to paste that in here and you can see what this is going to look like. So there's visitor sign in. It says, hi, give me your information. Obviously, you're going to want it to be something a little bit more professional, a little bit more friendlier. Um, you can even have more information here. And then what I'll have to do is put my name in and then also put an email in. Let's see. And then once I do that, then I can go in and I can access the gallery. Now, if the gallery is password protected, after visitor sign in, that little below it is going to be a little password field. But since this was a public gallery, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now let me close out of this. Those emails are stored here in the communications list right here. And you can actually search through the emails based on gallery. So if you go here, you can search for emails based on the client gallery. And there's all the emails that were associated and tracked with just that specific gallery that I selected. And then what you can do is if you want to market to those specific clients, you can select them here, select them all right here, and send them an email this way right here. And we're going to talk about that some more here in a minute. I know I've got a question coming up about doing your own uh, sale, your own client sale, own promotion, and I'm going to show you how to do that that way. Um, so let's see. 
Next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, we were talking about engaging the visitors. So after somebody visits the gallery and goes through the process of visitor sign-in, there is a feature called um, triggered emails that you could have set up. Now, you'll need to have this set up actually before you turn on visitor sign-in and send out the gallery invites and all that stuff. You'll want to have this turned on before. But what it is, is right here, this is the visitor sign-in for a gallery, and we're going to turn on the e the triggered email. So the first thing you'll want to do is create a template. So click on email templates and then just click new template right here. I've already got a couple created, so let me just show you what this says. This one just says, hey, thanks for checking out my photos. I hope to shoot your wedding soon. Obviously, this is very boring, dull text, and it's nothing like you would actually want to use. So you, you know, you could put something in here like, hey, thanks for checking out the gallery. I hope you enjoyed the photos. If you've got an event, if you've got a wedding, if you've got a prom, a graduation, something coming up soon that you'd like to have photographed, I would love to sit down with you and have coffee with you. Here's my phone number. Something like that you could do. Um, something like that you could put in this email template. And then after you've got that created and saved, you're going to go and set up a triggered email. So we're going to triggered emails, go to visitor sign in, click edit. Then you can say, let's choose that template right there. And let's say I want that email to go out to the people who sign into that gallery three days after they sign in. So as soon as they go through the visitor sign in process, three days after that, they're going to get that email that I just set up. And you can actually add more. So you could add up to three more scheduled emails to go out to those email addresses. So that is definitely one way to automate the engagement of your gallery visitors and stuff like that but again you know nothing ever will ever replace really good personal interaction this is just something that can make it a little easier and perhaps help you with your marketing a bit all right let me get back to my dashboard really quick and uh it looks like we got a question in the chat let me see I'm going to try to say your name again. I'm probably going to get it wrong, so I do apologize. Uh, Jorgen, he says, I can automatic add names of people to the keyword of every picture, but if people search for the name, it searches in all the galleries. Can I make it search in only the gallery the user is looking at? Yeah, so unfortunately, there is not a way um, to make the search only search through the specific gallery that that visitor is viewing. But what you could do is, um, what you can do is if you go to photos, you can exclude galleries from search results. So what we're gonna do is go right here and let's just say uh, everything in, well, you can't see it, let me go right here. So let's just say everything right here in this portfolio folder right here, Let's just say I don't want it to appear in search results. What I'm going to do is click on that, go to group access right here. Let me get myself out of the way here. And then if you go down and uncheck this option right here, you can go down to the search and metadata and you can set this option right here that is going to say, do not include the photos and videos in any search results. And that's the way that you could exclude galleries um, from the search so that they're not having to go through a bunch of different galleries and things like that to find the photos that they need. Um, and that's one thing that you could try there. Let's see, let me get back out of this here. And that's gonna at least limit, lower that the result, results down a little bit more. Another thing that you could do is that um, if you have all of the galleries locked with a password, so depending on the account, if, if you have all of the galleries locked with a password, then if they're searching in just a specific gallery that has a password, then that search will be limited to um, that gallery. It's not going to show search results from other private or password protected galleries. It would only show search, re search results for the gallery that has a password on it.
Um, that's, so that's another option you could look into is maybe password protecting your galleries so that your clients, when they do a search, they're only searching through that specific gallery. Um, another option that's available too is um, what we call the events feature. Um, that's for advanced accounts only, but basically what it is is um, when somebody enters a keyword, if the photos are keyworded and everything is set up correctly, uh, it will take them right to the photos of that keyword. It's a little it's a little involved to go through all the process here, but we've got some support articles on that that can help you set that up. And if I could get Cheryl to throw the support article about creating events and stuff like that, then maybe that would help you out with that, Jorgen. Maybe I said it right that time. I hope so. All right, uh, let me get back to my dashboard, and uh, we'll go ahead and take some more questions here. Let's see. Ah, the next question. So is there a way to schedule and run sales and promotions through Zenfolio? Yeah, so you could do this with the built-in email feature. And what you could do is actually you could go and you can schedule promotions and things like that and create uh, coupon codes and stuff like that and set up those scheduled promotions. I think we've probably talked about this. It feels like I'm repeating some stuff. Uh, I think we probably had this question a couple of weeks back, but I'm more than happy to go through it again. So what we're going to do is first, let's go ahead and just set up a coupon uh, for a sell. So we're going to go to selling and then click on coupons and campaigns. And then what we're going to do is just go add new coupon right here. And then let's just say this one is for Valentine's Day that's coming up. So I'm just going to do Valentine's Day right here. I probably spell it wrong. Of course, I spelled it wrong. And then for the code right here, I'm just going to do love 2017. And then this is what I would probably recommend doing. Uh, you know, you could do a discount products, which is what you're going to want to do. Do, uh, you could do an amount if you want, but I don't really uh, suggest doing amount discounts. Usually I prefer going with um, percentage uh, uh, discounts. So what I'm going to do is go to a percentage right here. And let's just say we'll do 20%. Uh, and then what we want to do is go down here and you can just go ahead and either choose for it to apply to all of these products or um, you can... Uh, unselect these and limit it to just a specific product category. Unfortunately, right now there's no way to limit it to a specific product, but you can limit it to a specific product type, such as prints and products or digital downloads. Um, so next, what we're going to do is go down here. This is if you want to limit the coupon to work in a specific gallery, that's what this is for right here. Um, next, we're going to go down here, the maximum number of uses. I'm going to leave this set to none because I don't want to have to make a bunch of different coupons to send out to all my clients. But what I am going to do is I am going to make an ex a start date and an expiration date. So I want this coupon to be valid only from the 13th through the 15th here. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set an order minimum which means that this coupon will only work if my clients make an, er an order of uh, $50 or more. So I'm going to put that right there and hit save. Okay, so now we've got that coupon created. What we're going to do is go back up to our communications panel right here, and then we can actually schedule an email. So if you've got a specific group of galleries of clients that you want to target, for this particular promotion, you can go right here and let's just say I'm just going to target this particular client's group. I'm going to click on that and hit apply. And then I'm only going to see emails that are tied to those specific galleries. Next, what I'm going to do is click right here, hit send email right here. But what I'm going to do is instead of now, I'm going to schedule this to send and I'm going to schedule this to send on the 12th and then what I'm going to do is come down in here and obviously you're going to want to alter the text that's in this to say hey I'm running a special use this coupon code on orders over $50 and you can get a 20% discount and then put in the dates that that code is going to be valid or the dates that the sale runs through and then after that just click continue to preview 
it's going to show you what that email looks like and then you just hit schedule email right here and that email is going to be scheduled and on the dates that you set up that promotional email is going to be sent out to those clients they're going to get that coupon code and be able to participate in that uh that promotion and then you know if you want to set down a day or two days or three days and schedule out the entire year's marketing promotions and things like that this is an easy way to do it right here um, and it's all available right there in your Zenfolio account. All right, let me get out of this really quick, get back to my dashboard, and uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Can you show how to put a gallery or blog onto Facebook? I see people list there so when I when we click it it goes back to our website so it sounds like maybe you're wanting to try and um, export the photos to uh, export the photos to your Facebook page um, rather than um, are you wanting to export the photos to your Facebook page so that the photos are actually on your Facebook page or are you just wanting to share a specific gallery I'll just show you how to do both. So you can actually do both. You can share a gallery to Facebook. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to put a link back to the gallery on Facebook so that when your um, whoever's on Facebook, they click on it, it's going to link back to that gallery, which is good for you because it's going to bring traffic to your website. Now, if you're actually wanting to show how to put the images on onto Facebook, we can do that as well. So let's go to photos right here. That's a great question too, Katrina. Katrina, thank you for the question. And uh, let's go right here and see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and just pick out a specific gallery right here. And then what you can do is, if you wanna just share this gallery to Facebook right here, what you can do is come over here to the right and go to sharing and client access right here. And then what you can do is click on Facebook right here. And then you'd have to be logged into your specific Facebook account if that's where you're wanting to go. And then it'll share to whatever account that you're on. So that is one way that you can do it. If you're wanting to share to like your personal Facebook page or your business Facebook page or something like that. Now, if you're wanting uh, to export the images uh, to your Facebook page so that uh, the images actually go to your Facebook page and it's not just a link to the gallery, what you wanna do is go right up here. Let's see, we're just gonna select all of these right here. So at the very bottom, you can hit select all. Then you can go to photo actions right here and there's the export button right here then you can click on Facebook and actually what that's going to do is that's going to either you know give you the option to create a new album on Facebook or you can actually export these I believe to an existing uh, photo album that you have on your Facebook account so I hope that's what you were looking for Katrina also I could really show you really quick how to allow client sharing so that when clients are in their gallery they can export the or i'm not sorry they can't export but you can allow them to share the gallery themselves to their own facebook page which in turn is going to be really good for you because anybody that clicks on it it's just going to be a link to the gallery on your website so let me show you how to do that really quick um let me just hit cancel right here and then what we're going to do is i'm just going to load this uh gallery right here into customize view so anytime you want to do any customizing to a specific gallery what you want to do is just click over here on the left hover over preview right here and click customize all right so this is loading this specific gallery right into customize view and I'm just going to hit continue. And as you can see, there's already a share option up here. But if you don't see that in your galleries, what you can do is you can just go up to options right here, uncheck use default settings, and then you can go to page elements. And there is the share button right here that you can set to show. Now, if your client's gallery is password protected, then um, you they will 
you know anybody that clicks on the link on Facebook, they will be required to um, they will be required to enter the password as well. So um, this works really good for public galleries, um, but if the client's gallery is password protected and they share it to their Facebook page, anybody that clicks on it is going to have to enter the password to get into it, which is probably what we want in the first place if we made the gallery password protected. Hey, and while we're talking about client galleries and password protection, I know as photographers, um, it's really easy for us to sink into the habit or the thought that all of our clients want our um, all of our clients want their galleries password protected. I know for me, that's immediately I assume that without even talking to my clients, I just assume, hey, my clients want their galleries password protected. But it's worth talking to your clients and explaining to them uh, what the difference is, and that, you know, asking them if they really, really want their gallery to be password protected. If it's not that important to them, if they're okay with it being public, leave that gallery public because if you keyword it and stuff like that, that's just more information that Google can find at index and will be beneficial for your SEO. So like I said, I know it's easy for us to always assume that our galleries, our clients want their galleries password protected, but you know, it's worth talking to your clients and seeing it and finding out if they're okay with it being public because it's just gonna be beneficial to you. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. And two, while I'm here, any changes that you guys make here um, on Customize View, just remember they don't actually go live unless you click this Publish button right up here in the top right. So you can come in here and you can do some customizing. If you want to, you know, work on your site for a couple of weeks until it's perfected, you don't have to publish it until you're done. And it's going to save your changes here. Just remember that when you're done and you're ready for the changes to go live, you've got to click that Publish button up here. All right, going back to the gallery here. I'm sorry, back to the dashboard. Let's see. Let's see what questions we have coming up here. Uh, let's see. So I've got a question that says, I have an order waiting to be approved. However, I cannot approve it because one of the images says that it does not meet the resolution requirements. So this does come up occasionally from time to time. If you have order approval on, um, which I definitely recommend, and we can talk about that uh, here in a second. Um, but if you have order approval on, which you, like I said, I definitely recommend you have it on. But if you're uploading smaller files, let's say you live somewhere where maybe your internet is just not that great. Uh, and it takes a little bit longer to upload those full resolution files. So maybe you're uploading smaller versions and allowing your client just to go through and you know purchase the ones they want. Sometimes those files are not going to be big enough to actually print the products that your clients select. And in that case, what you need to do is you need to do a replacement. So if we go right up here to selling, let me just switch over to my full browser here a drink of water um, right over here on the top left you can see it says there's two orders that need to be reviewed and approved so I'm gonna click on these right here and then I'm just gonna click on this order right here okay so this order I, I mean I don't have any orders that are gonna show that needs to be replaced but um if you've got uh, You'll see it, it's going to have a red pink uh, error around the image right here and it'll say it doesn't meet the requirements uh, for the, the image. Um, one of the first things that you might want to check is if you allow your clients to do any cropping, sometimes they get a little out of hand with their cropping and they might crop in way in on something like this. And you know maybe the file that you uploaded is large enough to print whatever size print you think. But if your client goes in and zooms way in and tries to crop a really uh, tight crop, that's definitely going to mess with the resolution there. Um, so you'll ma make sure that you look for that first. If you see that little resolution error there, check and see if it's been cropped in. Uh, you can maybe try to crop it. You can try to scale that crop back a little bit, and maybe you'll be able to approve it without actually having to re-upload an image. Now, if you actually are going to have to, if you know for a fact, you know, that um, like I said, if you know for a fact that that image is too small because you uploaded it too small because of your internet or something like that, you can change this just this specific photo out uh, with a higher resolution image. So what you want to do is just click this change photo right here, 
Now, before you do that, what I would recommend doing is going to your client galleries or somewhere um, where you're going to do that and just create a gallery called replacement photos because this is going to make it easier on you, I promise. So create a client gallery or a new gallery on like your client's folder. And just call it replacement photos and then upload that photo that you're going to replace into that replacement gallery uh, there in that clients group. Now we're going to go back to that order. And then what we're going to do is click on that and I'll show you how to change that photo out. So I'm clicking on this and then right here is a little change photo button. You can click right on that. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And this is going to pop up and then you just come here and if you don't do the um, replacement gallery like I was talking about, you're going to see all of the images in the gallery and you're going to have to come through here and find that specific one. So that's why I recommend creating that replacement file gallery because you can go here, locate that gallery, hit select, and then guess what? You only have to go through one or two images, however many you uploaded. So much easier than trying to scroll through and find that. So then you just click on that, hit replace, and then you should be able to approve your order as long as there's no more issues. Then you just go up here, click approve order, and you're good. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here. Looks like we got a question coming in from Tom on Facebook. Tom says, is there any way to set up quantity discounts? Um, so I'm guessing you're probably wanting to do like tier discount levels. So if somebody buys more prints, they're going to get a bigger discount with the more prints that they buy. So unfortunately, there's not really a dramatic way to do uh, a, a dynamic discount like that. But what you could do is you could create tier packaging if you packaging if you want. So um, what you would do is maybe create a package that has two eight by tens and set that package to be a specific price, and then create another package that has three eight by tens, etc. You just go up to uh, selling. Let me get here really quick. Selling, and then click on packages, and you would basically just create tiered level tiered packages. So we go here, do add new package, and then let's do two eight by tens right here. And then what we're gonna do, one photo for each, add products right here. Go up there, choose the lab that you want, click on prints, and then go down here and let's choose those eight by tens. And let me get myself out of the way so you can see the screen. Add selected products right here. And then we are going to either apply or not apply color correction. Just make sure that it matches what you have in your price list. So on your price list, if you set it up to have a color correction, then make sure you set that option here on your package. So now we've got 8x10 added here. We're going to make this 2. And so let's say if normally you're selling an 8x10 for $15, we'll set this selling price for this package to be $20. So that puts it at $10 per 8 by 10 instead of 15. And then you would just basically just repeat the process for whatever level of tiers that you want to set up. So if you wanted to do um, three 8 by 10s and say do $9, you would set it up to be 27, obviously. And then you would just, like I said, just repeat the process for each level you want to set up. Um, I know it's not the ideal way to do tier uh, pricing currently, although unfortunately that's the only way to do it, but that is definitely a great uh a great suggestion and I would love to see that being offered. Um, if you could reach out to the user voice forum and maybe do a suggestion there, that would be awesome because I think that would be a cool feature for us to have. All right, let me get back to my dashboard really quick. And if I could get Cheryl to toss out the user voice forum link for uh, Tom, that would be awesome. Okay, um, so let's see, what's my next question here? Katrina says, currently my portfolio doesn't have a drop down button to show the galleries. I have to click portfolio. How do I add a drop down option? Great question, Katrina. Um, so what you need to do is just you need to edit your site menu, and I'm glad you asked. That it's a really easy to do. Uh, let me just show you really quick how you do that. So what we're going to do is go into customize view right here. And then um, we're just going to set up a new drop down menu. So let me get myself out of the way here and let me just 
delete this little drop down menu right here so we can start all nice and fresh. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go and create a new drop down menu item here. So we're just going to click add new right here. Well, you got to be careful what you're clicking on. If you click on the wrong thing, it tries to take you places. Okay, so click add new right here, and that's going to open up this text box. And so what we're going to do, uh, Katrina, is we're just going to name this portfolio right here. And then I'm going to hit enter. And instead of actually linking this to something, like your portfolio group, which I'm probably assuming is how it's linked now, what we're going to do is actually change this to show drop down uh show drop down menu right here so we're going to do that and click update okay so now we've got that thing right there created now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a new site menu item to it so what we're going to do is go right here hover over it and click the plus symbol right here and then first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to link to my landscape gallery so i'm hitting landscape and i'm going to hit enter and then what I'm going to do is this time we want to leave this to be linked to a group gallery or collection. Hit select. And I'm going to locate that portfolio group, which is right here. Go in here, choose that landscape group, and hit select. Now the one thing that's really important to remember here is that this does not dynamically update. So anytime you upload and create a new uh, gallery, um, anytime you upload and create a new portfolio gallery, you will have to come in here and manually add that new drop down menu item to your drop down menu. So we're going to go back here and let's just add one more so we can make sure that we've got a clear understanding of the process. So we're going to click plus next to this little symbol right here. And then let's do portraits right here and hit enter. And same thing, we're going to leave this to be group gallery or collection. We're going to hit select. And then we're going to click on that portraits gallery right there and click update. Okay, so now let me reload this preview. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this up in a draft preview, uh, Katrina, so you can see how this is working. What we're going to do is right here up at the top, go draft preview. That's going to open it up in a new tab. You can see what it looks like published out without actually having to publish it if you're not ready. So there's that portfolio drop down that we created. And if I hover over it, there's those drop downs that go to those different galleries. So like I said, all you need to do is go in and actually set up and link, uh, set up that drop down and link, link to the correct galleries. Something else really cool about the uh, drop down menu is let's say that maybe you've got, um, you've got some menu items like this or this that are already um, on your site menu and maybe you wanna go ahead and add those to that drop down. Well, if you expand this drop down right here, just by doing that, you can actually drag and drop items into the drop down menu as long as you have it expanded. So if I unexpand it and I try to drag and drop something into it, it's not going to go. So the key is making sure that you expand it before you try to drag and drop something in there. Anyway, Kat Katrina, I hope that helps. I hope it answers your questions and lets you get your site menu up and looking the way that you want. All right, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And let's see, it looks like we've got another question coming in from the chat. So let's see what the question is here. Carlos says he can't publish on the blog from a password protected gallery. That is correct. So if you want to use an image on your blog that's from a password protected gallery, you've got two options. Um, one would be to maybe create a specific gallery for blog images and copy that image from that password protected gallery into that gallery that you've created for your blog. Now, the other option is you can actually go in and make just a single image public if you want. So let me show you how to do both options really quick. That way you can get your blog and get the images up that you want to use in there. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go in here to photos right here. Absolutely, Katrina, you are welcome. Thanks for coming on here and asking questions. I appreciate it. Love helping you guys with your accounts. Uh, hopefully you come back next week, bring some friends, and uh, bring some more questions. All right, Carlos, so what we're doing is we are in the photos page right here, and let's say that you want to use a image on a blog post from this specific gallery right here. So 
even though it's password protected, you could actually come in here and change the access on just a single image so that you can use it on your blog post. So you're just going to click on that image over under toolbox, make sure that you're on the photo right there. Go to photo access, uncheck same as containing gallery, click public and then save that. And that's going to make just that specific image public. Then you can go and use it on a blog post if you want. Now, the other thing that you could do is maybe go to, uh, let's see, let's just go right here and let's go ahead and just create a specific gallery for blog post images so that I can still leave all the images in their galleries password protected um, as well. So what I'm going to do is just click on this, go here, create a new gallery, and let's call this blog photos. All right, so now we've got blog photos. And as you can see, immediately that gallery turned private. That's because that group right there is private and it's gonna automatically take on the settings from that group. So what we're gonna do now is let's go to this gallery right here. And let's say, I don't necessarily like the idea of taking an image that's in a password protected gallery and making it public for whatever reason. You can click on an image right here, go to photo actions, hit copy and then locate that uh, blog photos that blog post gallery and copy it to that gallery so we're going to copy it to that gallery that image is going to copy over to that gallery and then now what we're going to do is go back and you can either make the gallery public since it's in a private group that would be fine you can club over here and go gallery access uncheck that and make it public and then that way any photos that you copy in there will be public as well. And then now you can use that photo in the blog post. So those are the two options that you've got there, Carlos. Like I said, you can either make the photo, the specific photo that you want to use public. So you can use it in the blog post or you can copy it over to another gallery uh, and make that gallery public. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if, we, if you need any more clarification or have any more questions on that, definitely please let us know. But that's a great, great question. All right, let me go back and see what other questions we got here. Um, let's see. Can I offer phone cases for sale? Yeah, guys, so we do have phone cases that you can offer to your clients for sale. Let me show you how to add those to your price list, actually. So what we're going to do is go to selling right here and click on price list. And then you're just going to pick the price list that you want to add these phone cases to. So I'm just going to go to my demo list right here. And then what we are going to do is go and click on add products right up here. Go up here next to show and you want to choose the Zenfolio phone case vendor right here. And these are the cases that we've got to offer right here. So the iPhone 6S, there's these, the backpack style case, there's a folio case which is this one right here. And then there's also a, uh, I think a tough case as well right here. And you can just come through and pick and choose the models and types of cases that you want to offer. And then after you've got them picked out, just scroll down. Let me get myself out of the way here. Just scroll down and then click that add selected products option right here. Those are going to go to your price list and they're going to be under photo gifts. So after you click that add products, you might do like I did for a second and say, oh, where did it go? Disappeared. Under photo gifts, you're just going to scroll down right here. And then there is the folio case by Zenfolio photo cases, right? Or phone cases right there. And then there's the tough case. And you're just going to click on those and price them just like you do any other prints and products in your price list. You're definitely welcome, Carlos. That was a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of people ask about that. We get a lot of emails about that. So great question. All right. Um, let me go back to well, anyway, after you so after you add the phone cases to your price list and you price them, just click that save button and then you're gonna be offering your clients phone cases. All right, let me go back to my dashboard here and let's see what questions we got here. Can I make profit off of adding framing? Absolutely. So um, let me get back here. So if you haven't 
offered framing or matting or something like that on one of your price lists yet, you can definitely add matting, framing, and all that kinds of stuff. But not only can you add it and offer it to your clients, just like anything else in the price list, you can absolutely mark that up and make some profit off of it. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go back into selling, click on price list, let me get some water here. All right, so back into price list. And then uh, let's just go back to that demo list right here. And then you should notice up at the top, there's going to be a uh, finishing and mounting tab right here, finishing and mounting. And that's going to be the tab that you want to click on right here. Finishing and mounting, that's going to be the tab that you click on right here. And then you can come through and choose the options that you want to offer. So you can offer luster coating, uh, single weight backboard, uh, frames and things like that, foam core mount. You just click on what you want to offer, come through here, right here, and price it accordingly right here. So there's the base price for the single weight backboard. You can mark it up right here as well. Um, if you're not familiar with how the price list works, you can decide the amount of profit that you want to make off of a product or you can decide how much you want to sell it for. So if you know maybe you want to make uh, five bucks off of the backboard on an 11 by 14 print, you're just going to put five bucks in here and it's going to automatically adjust that selling price so that you make nine dollars or so that you sell it for nine dollars and 14 cents, giving you a five dollar profit. Or if you want to uh, change the selling price, let's say you know you want to sell that thing for 10 bucks, you just change the price there, and then that will show you what your profit is going to be there. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here, but we offer lots of framing options. So if you guys haven't checked out the framing options yet, definitely go down and check those out. Um, just scroll down, there's lots of different frames, there's mounting options, uh, there's even the glass uh, options as well. All right, let me get out of this and go back to the dashboard. Uh, another question in the chat. I know I'm going to totally bomb this uh, bomb this name. I'm not going to get this name right at all, so forgive me. Boss Fem Production says, why is it difficult to get you on the phone? Well, guys, we offer phone support. We have phone support hours. Um, unfortunately, it's only for the advanced level account. So if depending on the type of account level that you have, that's going to... Um, limit your availability to phone support. If you've got a starter, if you've got an unlimited, you know, a basic all, or any of the old legacy accounts, um, you know, if you've got a pro or a premium or anything like that, those accounts unfortunately are not going to come with phone support. You're going to need to have the advanced account to get phone support. Um, if you're not sure what account level you have, you can go up to settings right here, click on accounts, and then what you can do is on account information right here, it'll say account level and it'll tell you what you have. So uh, if you think that you had an advanced account and you're wondering why you're not getting phone support, you might want to go check. You might have um, a legacy uh, account that just does not get phone support. And if that's the case, go ahead and uh, you should consider upgrading. You can use code upgrade 15 and get a 15% discount on your upgrade. And when you upgrade to all of our upgrades are prorated. So we're going to give you a prorated upgrade. And then if you use that code, you'll get a 15% discount as well. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. And let's see what other questions I've got coming in here. Um, let's see here. Can I give my business partner his own access to the account? Yeah, so this is another advanced only feature, but you can absolutely create uh, user accounts where um, other people like other photographers and stuff like that can log in and have their own access. Now, depending on what, what type of account you create for them um, can limit their access. So if you go to settings right here, and then I believe it's under, yep, so settings under account, go to manage users right here above my head. And then what you can do right here is you can create a new user account. And again, like I said, this is for the advanced account only. So if you don't, if you don't see this, unfortunately, you probably only don't have an advanced account, but you should definitely consider upgrading the advanced account and the phone support's great. Um, so what you can do is create a new user account through here, you know, just put in their name, their email address, give them a username, 
Uh, and then what you can do is you can decide their role. So let me get myself out of the way here. Um, you can decide their role. So if it's somebody like a partner who you want them to have uh, quite a bit of access to uh, all the different things like that, you want them to be able to request payouts, you know, do anything with the money and, and stuff like that, you're going to want to give them that partner level account. Now, if, if it's just a photographer that works for you and you just want them to maybe have the ability to upload photos and things like that, there's these other level accounts down here that you can choose, photographer, contributing photographer, uh, and that will give them a login to be able to access that. Now, with that being said, I do want to clarify that while some of those account levels do limit things that they can access in the account, Anybody who you create a user account for can and go to photos right here and they can go through and they can see all of the galleries and things like that that are uploaded. Currently, there's no way to restrict the galleries and things like that that they can view, just different parts of the site that they can access. All right, let's see. I've probably got time for one or two more questions, uh, and then we're going to have to cut it off for the day. So let me see what I've got down here. And if you've got any questions, this will be the time to throw it in the chat or go ahead and comment on the video. Let's see. Katrina says, is there a way if I publish my account to cancel it while I make more updates? So if you want, you can definitely put your account into kind of an under construction mode. Um, let me show you how I would recommend doing that. So what I'm going to do is go up to dashboard up here. And um, what I first thing I would recommend doing is I would recommend creating some kind of graphic on um, some kind of graphic in Photoshop. Maybe use one of your images, put some text over it, say something like, you know, thank you for visiting my website. It's still under construction. Please check back later. Um, I would definitely create something like that in Photoshop and upload it in a gallery first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go hover over my Zenfolio, go up to customize website, and then basically what we're going to do is show that image by itself on the home page, remove any functionality from it, um, and then we are going to, I would probably suggest at least leaving your um, contact page up there. So what we're going to do first is go to site preset, and I would recommend picking something full screen like this so that graphic that you create takes up the whole page. Go to apply right here, continue. And then after that's updated there, what you could do is um, change the background content. So go up to background content and instead of it being a slideshow like it is right now, go to change, choose photo or video and then locate that gallery that you uploaded that um, that graphic to. So I think I may have something in here. I have no idea if I have anything. Let's see, gallery here. And let's see, let's just go back here. Well, you get the idea. So you just need to find a, um, a gallery here that um, has that graphic that you created. I just want to find something that's got a nice uh, full screen image so I can show you what it is. Yeah, and I do want to correct something too. Uh, I did say use a preset. If you are working on your website, you might not want to use a preset because it's going to change everything in your entire site. So I would just switch really quick to a, lay a full screen layout. So we're going to switch to this. I'm going to choose this image right here really quick. Hit select. And then just in, just imagine that this has got some text over it that says my site's under construction. Please check back again later or something like that. We're going to click update right here. And then after that, what we are going to do is we're going to remove uh, all of the links and stuff like that that's on the site. So we're going to go up to options right here and you can remove the uh, page header, the footer, the homepage logo if you want the home page menu and things like that. And then all that's going to show on your home page is that graphic that you created saying your site's under construction. Um, and that way nobody will be able to do anything on your site or anything like that until you get it uh, finished and published the actual version of your site. All right, uh, let me get back to my dashboard. I might be able to work in one more question. Let me see really quick.
All right, so we go to dashboard really quick, and I'm just going to go right here. Rodney says, I use Dropbox auto upload feature from my memory card. Is there an option to auto upload my photos from my memory card directly into an upload folder in Zenfolio? Um, I think there used to be a way to do that with iFi cards, but we no longer support that. Um, you might be able to find out some information or set up something in the API that Zenfolio offers. Um, you, if so, if that's what you're looking for, you should definitely look into that. And then also, definitely please take that suggestion to the user voice forum uh, and bring that suggestion up so our developers can see that and take it into consideration. But unfortunately, right now, I don't believe there's a built-in way to do that. Okay, guys, unfortunately, um, that is all of that is all the time that I'm going to have for today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks for watching us on Facebook. Uh, thanks for watching us on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you click that Zenfolio icon on the bottom right corner and subscribe. There's going to be tutorials coming out on Fridays. So tomorrow I'm putting a tutorial out uh, on how to, how to handle a client that's been accidentally locked out of their gallery and what you can do about it. That tutorial is going to come out tomorrow. And uh, so make sure you subscribe. And then if you guys enjoyed the video, if it helps, if you guys like this live stream, make sure to give it a thumbs up and give us a nice comment. Hope to see everybody here next week, same place, same time. And until then, I hope you guys have a great week and good luck with your account.